right, you ready to talk about some shit? Yes! Yes! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talking Shit. My name's Dan. My name's Joe. Hello, everybody, welcome to Talking Shit. My name's Dan. My name's Joe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talking Shit. My name's Dan. My, uh, my name is Joe. Hello, everybody. We're in a bit of a bloody loop here, aren't we? Are we in one of those time loop situations? What do you mean, one of those time loop situations? Well, I was just quoting mm. a certain film Ooh. by the name of, finish my sentence, right now. <laughs> Groundhog Day. Ah, uh, yes. Ha 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 ha. They didn't make that joke at any point. I wish they did. Because then I would have gone, I, I've seen that movie. I did the oh, joke. Yeah. What? Oh, what is this? Groundhog Day? Ha <laughs> ha. And then they're like a laugh <laughs> track the, plays. And they look at the camera. Yeah, so. Yes. We're talking we're... about Palm Springs, actually. Yes, we are Kinda talking about Palm Springs. You guys there. We finally got Palm Springs. Well, the rest of the world finally got Palm Springs because this film has been out. On like HBO something or Hulu or Hulu, I think it was Hulu think. maybe I don't yeah. fucking know. It's been out in America since them. like last year. Yeah. So I've, I think. I've kind of been hyped about this movie for like a year. Yeah, it came out in twenty twenty, uh, back in America. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what this is and for some reason clicked on this, um, by the way, this is talking shit. We talk about movies <laughs> sometimes. Uh, it used to be that we talk about movies, but now we talk about other things. But, but now, now we, we sometimes do talk quizzes. about movies. <laughs> do, do quizzes. Now we do quizzes. Uh, we're the quiz podcast. We're the quiz podcast. That every now and then talks about movies. Mm. But it's not like intelligent quizzes where oh. like we you know, we're like supplying you with answers for like like cool facts. Uh, no. you know. No. It's it's like yeah. Name your favourite pop culture characters and we'll tell you what zodiac sign you are. That might be knowledge. That might be classed as knowledge to some people. Not to us. Well, I mean, hey, we did it. So maybe maybe we're part of the problem. We are. I yeah, problem. we are. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but no, anyway, so Palm Springs is um, a Lonely Island production, let's say, uh, directed by Akiva Schaefer. Starring Andy Samberg, and I don't know, does how the I always his name's really weird. Jorma Tacone, I think, is the other member of the you know the shorter one with the glasses. I don't know if you know yeah. much about the Lonely Island, but yeah, Jorma Tacone. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't. He wasn't in it at all, was he? Was he in it? I don't think he was. I don't think so. Maybe he did some of the no. music then. I don't know. Mm. But either way. Hey, the uh, yeah. music was good. <laughs> the music was very good. <laughs> That's a point. Uh, everything in this is really good. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do like a... There'll be a non-spoiler section because this definitely deserves non-spoilers because I don't want to ruin this for anybody. You should... I mean, you know, not that there's... As we'll get into, not that there's like this big thing to spoil, but um, this movie's just really special and it's really good and it deserves to be just watched without knowing much going in. Uh, so we'll go through non-spoilers, we'll say what we thought, uh, then for people who have seen it, or people that just don't really care, even though you should care, definitely check this out, uh, there'll be a spoiler section, we'll go into stuff, and I'm probably going to ask you a million questions about science timey-wimey stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I've oh, been yeah, thinking yeah. about this movie. Um, <clears throat> and if you want to just know how good this movie is, Joe watched it twice in two days. <laughs> uh... Oh, in t no. Mm -hmm. no, in three days I think. But yeah, I watched I mean, it once on one day and also had a break. once on another watched day. It again. Fair play. So, I would. De I'm definitely going to watch this again. Yeah. It's really good. I mean, if that that if that means anything to you listeners, um, I'm not. You know, you might not know me, but I'm not really <laughs> one. I'm not really one to watch a movie again. Or like you know, instantly so go soon back to after it. as well. And hey, it's an hour and a half. Yeah, it's so oh, it's such it's, a it's nice, a nice concise package. Mm. And hey, it's a great time. It's it's really it's a great very time. good time. It's um yeah, it's just really 
So yeah, so Palm Springs. It's um, I've been hearing about it uh, last year. I was out running at one point, listening to a podcast, and Funhouse, I think, were on about it, and they were just talking about how incredible this movie was, and they were talking about how it's really cool. Uh, you know, it's just really cool that the Lonely Island guys have like come from nothing and. You know, they've done, they've now done some really cool things. I think this is definitely, now bear in mind, I've seen Popstar Never Stop Stopping or Popping or, I think it's Popstar Never Stop Stopping. I've seen that and it's like a mockumentary and I liked that. I, I did really like that. I haven't seen Hot Rod, but I've seen a lot of things from it. It seems pretty good. And I didn't see that baseball movie that they did uh, that apparently was okay. Um, but generally speaking, I, I, I love their music. I'm a big fan of uh, some of their like sketches as well. Uh, and I just really think, especially Akiva Schaefer as a director, like Andy Samberg, yeah, everyone likes Andy Samberg. I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. But like the real creative side of this, like the direction side of Akiva Schaefer is really interesting. I think he just makes some really good stuff. And this, like obviously I'm a bit biased because I've only really seen one of their other films and just know about the others. But this has got to be the best. And from what I can tell from everybody else who's been talking about this, this seems to be like everybody's agreeing that this is the best kind of film that's come out of the Lonely Island kind of productions over the years. Um, and it's so hard to explain because there, as much as there is just something really special about this film and it just, it just, it's nice, like it just feels, it warms my heart and it's just a really nice film that like, I don't, like, it's weird, there's something so special about it, and so different, and, like, it's so relatable, but also, it's a, it's a romantic comedy, like, f like, it's the formula of romantic comedy down to a T, like, I've studied the romantic, uh, comedy formula as part of my uni degree, it is literally all the steps that I've, that I've know that go into it, like, the default plan, this follows it, like, to a T, and yet, like, and also, like, the idea of it, for anyone who doesn't know what this film is, this film is basically Groundhog Day, uh, but it's, like, Andy Samberg and the mom from How I Met Your Mother. I need to learn her name because... Christina Milotti. Thank you. She's incredible. I really like her in the few Christine. things that I've seen her in. Sorry, Kristin Milotti. Kristin, ooh. Um, but, yeah, this film's basically Groundhog Day with the two of those and, like... I don't even want to say any more. That's really all you need to know. It takes place over the course of a wedding and there's fun times that happen. Maybe there's something deeper to be said. There definitely is. And there's it's just a really great film that makes you feel nice and is a really enjoyable watch. And it's really... Yeah. Like, it's it's so samey in terms of, like, it's just the default whatever. Like, you know, it does, it does a romantic comedy and it does everything a romantic comedy is supposed to do and it you know, it follows a formula, but my god, if it doesn't, it's not, if it's not one of the best romantic comedies I've ever seen, then shoot me, I don't know, it's, it's it definitely, it. to be honest, I would definitely go out and a shout and say it's my favourite romantic comedy of all time. I'm not a big rom-com guy, but I'm trying to think of others that I like, but it's definitely one of the yeah. ones that stands out more than anything this, else. Yeah, this is a rom-com. Wow, For and sure. it's actually funny. Let's yeah. Go. I believe when we watched Love Actually, you were like, fuck the rom-com or whatever, but this... Ah. Yeah, and don't forget, um, Kiss and Booth. <laughs> hey. Yep. Hey, don't leave, don't leave Is Kiss that a romantic Booth, comedy, or is it just a teen... I think it's... Is it meant to be? <laughs> it's Well, it's meant... Come on, they're trying to be... Like, it's mm. under that umbrella. I've, tr <laughs> I've tried to block out the memories of having to watch both Kissing Booth films back-to-back. <laughs> And then recording an episode about it. Go watch that episode. We lose our fucking minds. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, this. I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, I, like, I, I'll let I you agree say with what you. you. Think, yeah. I agree with you, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't put. I wouldn't word my feelings such as strongly. Okay. Like I feel like I feel, I, I I do feel the same way, but hmm. I wouldn't say it's special. Oh, I think it I is. I feel like you're coming on a bit strong there, Dan. <laughs> I think, I mean, you watched it, you, you yourself <laughs> said you, you don't even like rom-coms, and yet you watched it, you're not a person who watches films, like, again and again, so close, and yet you, want, you wanted to watch it again. That Doesn't that say something? Maybe it is special, bro. I don't know, for me, I've just, I've special. seen so many special films. Special is like, I don't even know a film that's special. 
Uh, would you say, like... Maybe we hold the world word in different regards. When I say special, I just mean something that, like... I don't know, it makes you feel something. Like, something other than just, that was an experience that I just watched. Cool, like, actually made me think mm. and be like, I like the vibe. No, well, not maybe, I like the vibe. It, maybe it would um, exhibit a, a yo out of your mouth. Yeah, and this film did several times. Yo. Mm. The same, to be fair. Yeah, I just think it's really <clears> great. <throat> like, again, it's really hard to explain without going into, like, spoilers and stuff, but... Elicit, like... elicit. Not exhibit. Elicit. Elicit. There you go. That's the word. Elicit a yo out of your mouth. That's me, what this film just, is to me. <laughs> there's something about this film where I pretty much, like, you were watching, the second time you watched it through with me, obviously it was your second time, so you knew what was going on. But there were so many things where I guessed exactly what was going to happen, and I made a joke about, like, oh, here's the formula, the second act, sad bits, whatever, here we got to be sad going into the third act. But yet I still felt something, which... It's hard for movies to get me to feel things because most movies are shit. <laughs> I don't know, I just... Oh, maybe almost... it's maybe it's just the fact that it's, you know... Like, it's just all the actors are doing a really good job. The script is so solid, like... The lines are really cool. And I just kind of like what it has to say about... Uh, as, as, like, potentially this sounds... I like what it has to say about life. Like, it's not just a film that's like... Oh, relationships and blah, blah, blah. It actually has something to say about... Like, it's very existential, wouldn't you say? Like, it's very... Like, almost nihilistic as well. It's almost very much like, what's the point in anything? And it's there. And I find it resolves yeah. that kind of... It comes to a conclusion, sorry, on what it's trying to say about the way that we... The way that life is nowadays and blah, 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 blah. Like, without getting into spoilers, I find a way that... I find that it resolves it in a very kind of natural way that doesn't try to beat you over the head with like happiness and blah 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 forget yeah, the pain yeah. of life like it actually kind I of is like the... no embrace pain but also see the we'll get into it spoilers but yeah there is definitely um a transition where obviously you say in the what the end of the second act at the start of the third like two thirds mm. of the way through the film where <clears throat> like they, they kind of start going into the more existential and mm. yo uh i kind of want to get out of here um <clears throat> type time things because like i feel like for the first two two thirds or for even first half it's mm. like it's just like a fun it's like a fun fun ride and it's like yeah they have, they have complete freedom to like do whatever I feel like, like it has a, i feel like it has an i feel like it has an, an underlying current of like like, it, it's not suddenly, like, halfway through the film you go, oh, now it's trying to say something. I feel like it, it, it states from the very beginning what it's trying to say. Like, it sets up what the film's actually about on a deeper level. But, like, it kind of masks it through fun. Through fun, you don't even really realise where it's taking you and how it's going to say something. And then suddenly it, 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 like, comes out with all this kind of almost philosophical kind of debates almost. And you're like, oh, shit. This film's teaching me stuff, but I'm having fun because jokes and Andy Samberg. <laughs> I also just really like hearing Andy Samberg swear because he doesn't swear that much. So, it, you know when somebody doesn't swear that much, so then when they do swear, it actually feels like an impact or funnier and stuff like Your that? Your mouth gapes open. Mm, I elicit a small yo. <laughs> yo, Andy Samberg just swore. <laughs> yo. What? <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, I just I don't know. It's really hard to explain without spoilers. Um, but we will. I, th I think it's comfy as well because you mm. know the the time loop slash Groundhog Day type thing. It's like everyone know everyone knows yeah. about this thing. So and there's it's plenty not... of movies that have done the same. Yeah, you don't have to get used to anything. You can kind of be like, oh yeah, I know that. Oh, have you this, have you yeah. ever seen? But then it's still it's still funny and yeah. and uh, fresh. That's what I mean. It's like it follows a formula, but yet it's really fresh and it's just really cool. Uh, yes, that is what the film's good. Have you ever seen the film Naked? Have you ever seen the film Naked? No. <laughs> it's a Netflix film, and it's Groundhog's oh, oh. Day. Um, but he's about this guy's about to be married, and he's naked, stuck in a lift, and he's caught in a time loop, and it's not very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, like that's just one example. That came out in like 2017. Like they've been doing Groundhog's Day. Groundhog Day, sorry, um, type deals for ages, and I don't think anything's got it right. 
um, until this, really. I feel like this is doing a really good job. Hmm. It well, does a really much. good job as it does a really good job as well of I find. I think you mentioned this as well. There's too many of these films where you're stuck in a time loop, and then they either try to like they either just go. And we're out of it now because it makes narrative sense that now we'd be out of the loop because people have come to conclusions and grown as people, so therefore the time loop's gone. No need to explain it, which can be fine, but also a little unsatisfying. But then there's also films that try to go way too explainy and try to be like, this is how we're going to do it. And I... Well, yeah. Without spoiling it, yeah, did you... How did you think they... Do you think they did a good job of dealing with the exit of the time loop? Or maybe they I... get out, maybe they don't, but how do you think they dealt with, like that kind of thing it, it's more towards the don't like they they do explain but i uh, like I, I don't care like it, i don't care yeah like it makes for me it's like it's fine yeah like, they spent it, it's not the film like that's not what that's yeah not what yeah it's like about, the, i like, like that they had a little bit of sciencey stuff to be like hey Blah 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 blah, science, blah 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 sciencey blah blah blah. But it's not yeah. like beating you over the head. Like it's a very small thing to be like, here's here's the way that this will make sense. But the story's gonna come in to make you actually feel something about the resolution rather mm. than just explaining. You know what I mean? Like and, so. It, uh, yeah, I can't I talk, you can't nice talk about it, but like the journey <laughs> to. No, I can't. No, yeah, yeah, can't. yeah. We'll we'll get into spoilers uh, real soon, and we'll actually talk about uh, these things. Um, so yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't really know what more we can say. Like, it's just amazing performances. The direction is like awesome. The cinematography, some of the shots in this. There's nothing like amazing. Like, art. again, nothing in this is like Oscar worthy. Like, oh my god, art. But like, it's just everything's nice. Like, everything is, everything is like interesting enough that like you're never bored it's never like and it's hard to do with a rom-com because rom-coms like i say are all the same but you're never bored and like oh okay whatever like the shots are always interesting and mix things up the like set pieces and just kind of the things that they do with very limited sets and i mean like it's taking place in pretty much the same place all the time like they do some really cool stuff that we'll get into and yeah it's just really interesting and like i love a film that has something to say without beating you over the head with it and I feel like this film is, like, the perfect example of that for me, where they clearly had something that they wanted to say with the film, um, and it's something very relatable, but it also doesn't beat you over the head with the resolution. Like, it feels very natural and very much mm. like, yeah, actually, yeah, that's and Yeah, that's and if point. you don't want to pay attention to the... The, the meaning and oh my god ah, I can hear existence. some judgment in that tone. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, um... Like you can just enjoy it for yeah, a, of course, of course. Because there's you know there's funny bits, um, yeah, yeah, funny the, happenings the... in a time loop situation. And would course. you say as well that the comedy is actually, especially because it's American, but it's actually funny comedy. Yeah, like yeah. I I did feel like the comedy a lot came. The comedy didn't often come from <laughs> oh fart joke poop stink or whatever like. <laughs> It actually came from interesting scenarios and like. Sorry, I need to stop myself laughing. <laughs> from me saying poo stink. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I felt like the comedy always came from character and also from just the scenarios that they put the characters in, how they react, and it all felt natural and yet absurd in the same way. Like, oh, this film is just. I just think it's really smart, but like funny. It doesn't talk down to you. It's just got everything. Like like you say, you can casually enjoy it. You can look deeper and there's something there for you to find. Like, I just think it strikes a really good balance of... But it's not I... deep, deep. Oh, yeah. It's not like, you know, you're not going to have... like You the can fill choose of... how deep you want to go into. Like, if you, if you, yes. can't, if you can't swim that well... Stay on the deep. surface. Just just stay in the, the kiddie But pool. if you bought your scuba gear... Philosophy. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can take... Oh, bro, you can take... You could take a Bob the Builder episode as deep if you really wanted to. But... Well, yeah, and there are, like, channels and shit that do that. That's not what this is, we promise. The show is literally called Talking Shit, all right? We don't... I... I'm just... The... I like looking deeper into films a bit, but try... I'm not going, like, fucking, like, analysing fucking, like, how the shots are composed and put together in a way that means something. I just mean subject The curtains matter, really. are blue because... 
fuck. <laughs> he wakes up and we see his eyes in a way that would indicate the dead there. The carpet is red because he is angry. The <laughs> curtains are blue because he is sad. There's, wow. oh, there's too what many. What a combination of emotions he's dealing that with. That is something that I really fucking hate about my uni course and just any kind of uni course that deals with artistic side of things is that people look for so much shit in nothing. And it's like, I appreciate, <clears throat> like I say, I appreciate you can go deeper with a lot of sh films and find some really interesting stuff. But when you're literally saying, like, you know, look at the very first thing that happens in this scene. She opens the curtains and the light is slightly blinding for her. This must mean that she shies away from society and that is something that says about modern day. But then, but and it's like, bro, just let her open the fucking curtains and let me get on with the rest of the scene. Fuck me. I had to explain yesterday. I had to explain to somebody why we had this simple joke in this film that I wrote. A simple joke of two people get on a lift this woman turns to the guy and is like, oh, what floor? And he's like, oh, it's uh, like floor 13. Thank you very much. And she says, okay. And then she just kind of stares at him and they both stare at each other and the camera cuts between them really fast. And then he's really confused. Like, you know, the joke is like, you just asked me in the toad as if you were going to press the button. What, what's going on? And then she just falls asleep fully standing and he's like, what? the fuck so then he presses the button and that wakes her up and then she gets mad at that and it's supposed to set up this it's a simple like that's not even a funny joke that's a simple joke of like makes you kind of exhale out your nose a bit but it's just a simple thing of like lol this workplace is so boring and the people are weird but he was like so what does that mean about them as people like are they drones that come in is she already tired because her life is so draining and blah blah i want what can i take away from this and i'm like bro the camera cuts between two people staring at each other like it's the office it's not it's not that deep like fuck me Oh my god, uni stupid kids. Unless unless you need to go for university to specialize in something like psychology or like a science or engineering. I mean even engineering, do an apprenticeship. Don't go to fucking uni. Stop going to uni until we figure it out because I've been there for 2 years and I have no idea what it is. I don't know what I'm doing. I I go to lectures and I sit there for like 4 hours and I get out and I'm like I think things were said. I don't know. Hey, it's working. It's working so far. You're still here. <laughs> Dude, just about. I'm going to graduate kicking. and have no idea what university was. I don't know what it was. And don't. it's not because of COVID. It's because uni's fucking weird. I don't get it. <laughs> Sorry, just went on a rant about uni. Spoilers, question mark? Uh, yeah, let's, um, let's, give a, let's give a rating. Mm. I f it's been so long since we've done a ratings joke. I don't remember what we used to do as a joke. We used to argue that nothing can be a 10 out of 10, truly. There's one yeah. podcast There's one podcast where Chris goes, I think I went to the toilet or something and you and Chris were still talking. And I listen back in the edit and Chris and you talk for like three minutes straight about how nothing can be a 10 out of 10 because nothing is true perfection. But how are we judging <laughs> this? How are we judging this? Is this based on our personal favorite or actual best? Because nothing can be 10 out of 10. And I was like, fuck me, cut that. <laughs> um... <laughs> 9 out of 10. Hmm. Yo, what? Are you going to say this movie's not special? Come on. I know yeah. what I know what go. you meant, what I was saying. Uh, I'm, go. Yeah, I'm going to give it... Yeah, I'll go same. It's got to be 9 out of 10. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll I'm be wavering, fair. but I'll... <laughs> you know what? I got too excited... Look, I got too excited the very first podcast episode we ever did. And I gave uh, Trial of Chicago 7 like a 10 out of 10. Which, going back, <laughs> I like that film a lot, but that's not a 10 out of 10. I don't know that funny. It is funny, because we got so excited. Podcast! Oh, um, I know the homes. Uh, Charlie Chicago <laughs> 7 and Pistol Shrimp. Pistol Shrimp Boy. Um, Project pa Project Power, Power, that's what it was called. That go. film's so fucking stupid. Uh, Mr. Pistol Shrimp! Uh, and Machine the girl that rap. Do you remember the girl that liked to rap? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Machine Gun Kelly, but he sets on As fire or whatever. As if you wouldn't just whatever. get bullied. Yeah, sure. Whatever. And she's like, and we think hey, maybe she's better than us though we because got into. Why does nobody Hamilton, know like... how to flush the toilet after they've had a shot? Des. Um, Go yeah. Don't watch Project Power. There's a bit where she has a daydream sequence where she raps to a teacher who gets devastated, and then she drops her books on the floor and leave, and everybody cheers. 
Um, yeah. Don't watch that yep. film. Uh, yeah, Spoil, 9 out of 10. Spoil, spoiler, 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 yes, spoiler. Yes, we're moving spoiler. into spoilers. Please actually check this out. It's on Amazon Prime. And if you don't have Prime, what is wrong with you? You can, like, buy it on Amazon Prime if you don't want to get Prime. But just get Prime. Just get a free trial of Prime for 30 days. Watch the film. Order some condoms. And then cancel it. Actually worth it. Yep. Actually worth it. Actually worth it. This is a really great film. And I really think... Even if you don't really care that much, maybe still don't listen to this spoiler bit just because maybe you'll listen to the spoiler bit and go, oh, that sounds really cool, and then the film isn't as good when you watch it. Or do whatever the fuck you want. It's your life. Hmm. We are going into spoilers. Father, if you're listening, because I know my dad listens to this podcast, dude, don't listen to the spoilers. You've got Amazon Prime. Watch the film. Do it. Yeah. Dan's father. Yeah, my dad who remains nameless. Hmm. Happy birthday. I think it's birthday soon. <laughs> I think happy it's, birthday. It's pretty soon to when this podcast comes out, I think. So happy birthday, undisclosed man, because I won't call you by your name. <laughs> Fuck. What was that laugh? Um, okay. <laughs> I can't just do you ever do that sometimes. where, like, your laugh will make a noise or something? You're just like, why did I... Why? Come on. <laughs> I kind of like it though, it's like, oh, God, this, like this, it. this guy's kind of quirky. <laughs> Felt cute, might not laugh later. Um, <laughs> ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Alright, spoilers from this point on. Okay. They killed a goat, um, maybe. <laughs> no. No. I want to just Because they did the same thing to the goat as they did to themselves. True. I want to talk about... There's a lot of questions I have, but I don't want to dive straight into a bunch of questions in case there are people listening mm. who we don't know anything. Yes, let's go chronological. Attempt. We do often... Yeah, we attempt this, but then we always end up all over the place. But let's try. So... <laughs> okay, regimented. Yes. Chapter one. The way the awakening of good leg. Um. So... Yeah, so let's just start with... So... Andy Samberg realised through hundreds of thousands of going through the same day over and over again, he realised that if he gave this crummy wedding speech at the wedding that is taking place in this film, um, if he gave the speech, that would... And then did a funny dance, I guess. I did like that dance. That was a cool... Uh, when he's like, he knows everything so perfectly that he's like getting the drinks off everybody and stuff. Uh, I yeah. like that. Because there's plenty of... Like, that naked movie, the one cool thing in it is they do a fight scene where, like, he keeps going back to the fight over and over again. So, eventually, he, you know, you like, he knows every move and he can, like, matrix it. I like yeah, when yeah. movies like this do that. Um, yeah. That, this was that's, off screen. That's kind of the first... It. That's, like, the first um, representation, kind of, of, like... Yeah, that's the very first day that we... everything. Yeah. That's, that's the very first day that we see, and it's just like, there's something off about him. Because obviously going into this, I didn't realise it was going to be like Andy Samberg had already been trapped. I thought maybe they both got trapped at the same time. But that was yeah. an indication of like, something's weird here. <laughs> yeah. Well, so... like, when, when he does the shit at the start. Mm -hmm. Not yeah, the start, yeah. like, at the party, where he's, like, dancing and shit. Yeah, because it may, like, so, my thing is, like, so he has... So apparently, as we learn later in the film, big twist, it's not really a twist, but, you know, a big Sag moment, where he reveals to, um, I don't remember any of their characters in the film, My Niles? Niles or Miles? Yeah, Niles, Niles is Andy, and she's called... Sarah? Is she? I think she's called Sarah, isn't she? And then, yeah, Sarah, Tyler is the bride, Misty is... Niles is boyfriend, and then Abe is the girlfriend. Groom. Even. And then the only other I only really I care about the two main characters and Roy. Yeah, uh, J.K. JK Simmons. Simmons. We should have said J.K. Simmons is in this movie. Shit, we didn't say that in non-spoilers, but he's in the movie, um, and he's great. Um, we may be talking about J.K. S another J.K. Simmons role on Amazon next week because we might do Invincible next week. Because I imagine we've both got a lot to say about that series. <laughs> Uh, finales this week, but we're doing Palm Springs this week. Fuck you. We'll get to it next week. Uh, so look forward to that, even though I said fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, so he figured out that he could, he could just keep having sex with her. But then, so he goes through the mundane routine again where he tries to have sex with her or whatever. 
Um, but then he does it near the cave and she accidentally follows him in and then she gets stuck in the loop. And I did really enjoy that kind of like... I, I always love when somebody else knows what's going on and somebody else is new to it and they're just really kind of lackadaisical like, yeah, you can try that. Mm, okay, I tried that. You don't want to... Okay. And then like, like I love that scene where she's going to crash the car head on and he's just got his head down on the airbag thing. He's like, you don't want to die slowly in the hospital. Trust me. It's just, uh, in, he just knows. It's just a reaction to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm try- uh, well, see, what you just said kind of brings up, I feel like the only possible problem or plot hole, maybe, that I have mm. where why why did he go in the cave is it just because of the pain yes that is a good point it might have just well that's a good point because he does mention that you know pain is very real but then also why did roy go in the cave because he thought he went in the cave Hmm. or maybe you just wanted to I guess for, for Roy, like he's he's there, he's like tortured him a bit, and then he's just gonna he's just gonna start leave and like start the day again. So here's but like uh, I don't know, like just just real uh... quick, just before we carry on, for anybody listening to this who is just listening on for the spoilers who doesn't know anything about the film, when we mention this cave, basically the way that you get stuck in this time loop of this day is there's a cave out in the because this wedding's taking place in the Nevada desert, uh, and there's a cave with a big glowy light in it, and if you get sucked into the light, you then start repeating the day. Yes, so, yeah, so Andy Samberg is having about to have sex with Sarah, and then he gets shot by J.K. Simmons. Roy! And, um, I love, he gets shot in the leg. You're a sick fuck, Roy! <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, how they introduce it, like... It's oh, so good. Out of nowhere, he just gets shot by an arrow. And we don't even see J.K. Simmons' yeah, yeah. face. It's just this... <laughs> this oh, camo so guy... <laughs> Yeah, some of the sick. lines in this, bro. You're a sick fuck, Roy. <laughs> just the way he says it. Yeah. He's he's so like you know you could tell he's like used to it, but he's still just like, oh come on, mate. Like come on. My question for J.K. Simmons is: so one night, one of the nights, Andy Samberg ran into J.K. Simmons at this wedding. Is he always at the wedding, or di- was it just in one of the timelines he showed up at the wedding? Because no, he's not no, always he... there, because he wakes up at home, or does he come for the reception? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he, would make he sense. He must travel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he, the reason that Roy, well, this also doesn't make sense. The reason that Roy only sh- apparently only shows up every couple of weeks because he lives so far away. But either way, if he lived far away, he's got enough time to get there in the evening. So just for like... He just six... can't be asked. Like, he's not going to go there every, every time, is he? True, but then why come back every now and then? I guess you're stuck in the same day, why not? Because he hates... Because he hates... He hates Niles. But there's got to be a part of him that has to realise he's kind of a part of this too. Like, don't get me wrong, Andy Samberg was... You know... I mean, well... Yeah. He wasn't even but like, that... It, that like, happens in the film, kind of, doesn't it? Like... Yeah, he, yeah. He, he does he kind of realise... After his... After Sarah runs him over with a police car. Jesus. <laughs> I thought what would have been interesting in that police car bit would have been like, part of me was thinking that it wasn't going to be Roy and that maybe the film was going to go in this direction of she's kind of snapped because even though her and Andy Samberg have now like fallen in love, um, she's woke up that one day and as you mentioned to me, she stayed in the room that she wakes up in a bit longer than usual and her sister's bride, uh, husband-to-be even, uh, comes out and they've had sex the night before the wedding, which is... Oof, um, not great. So she's kind of like freaking out and just wants to be like whatever. And she's like, "Well, nothing matters." So, and I think she's trying to mask that she's a like she's a piece of shit. So she's like, just like whatever. Who cares if I run over a cop or whatever? But I thought it would have been mm-hmm. interesting as if that wasn't J.K. Simmons and she like, uh, like ran him over or like you know something happened with the cop. And then suddenly you realise, like, maybe they both go in the, like, lock-up or whatever, and then suddenly the day actually doesn't reset, and that would have been a whole other film of, like, <laughs> oh, shit, the one day we do something really bad is the day that... I feel like that's a that's an idea. I may write something like that. I don't know if that's been done. It probably has mm. been. Where they're stuck in a time loop, and the one day they do something really bad, it actually then carries on. That'd be cool to interview. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. But the... Yeah. Mm. I don't know. 
I like that he went through all the effort, Roy, he went through all the effort of stealing a police car, stealing a police uniform, and then pulling him over. Because think about that, he's got to do that in one day. That's a lot of effort. <laughs> Maybe he knows somebody. <laughs> yeah, Roy. Roy knows everybody. That's true. He seems like the kind of person he's got who connections. would. He pff, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, yeah, we literally said we'd end up all over the place. Um, so oh, yeah. Oh, Roy, getting run over. Okay. Uh, that police officer that comes is just clapped. Oh, the other one. No, no, I meant like we jumped forward to that. I know, but we were kind of on it, so... Yeah, fuck it, yeah, yeah that's fine. I, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to say he's clapped. Why was he clapped again? Because... Oh, he I just kind of how... sat them on the side of the road, even though they've kind of murdered somebody. <laughs> Wouldn't you... Yeah, and also... Yeah. He, he fires the taser, but... I'm sorry! She ducks out of the way! Yeah. She ducks out of the way of a taser? That I, well, yeah. Uh, that's possible, right? In, in my head, like, yeah, but... Is... In, you'd see it coming, wouldn't you? At least I would. So you, so you would fake it and I'd then go down flick, and shoot? No, I'd flick during and then... Oh, you are a cool Valorant Easy. gamer. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Anyway, that's that. That's I mean, that. maybe he's just, you know, you don't have to be a good shot to get in the police. You just have to be willing to um, oppress minorities. Uh, that's a US police... I'm being clear of that, the US police. I'm allowed to say that because they're not all horrible, but mm, look at what happens in the last few years. All, all the years, they've always been terrible. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so like, there's this really cool story being told of like, you know, Niles was, his life was really shitty. Imagine the very first day he got stuck in the loop. I'm guessing what must have happened was, like... I like that they don't go into it because it's not really necessary. Like, it's more about Sarah experiencing this and Niles is there. Even though Niles is our main character. I mean, they're both our main characters, but we spend more time with Niles. But um, I like that it's kind of like... For him, he's been in there so long, it doesn't matter how it started. Like, this is what his life is to him. Like He, he doesn't remember his job. <laughs> yeah. Well, was that was because he was on shrooms or can he actually... He probably doesn't actually. Yeah, um, he, he probably would remember because it's like, eventually, what yeah. else do you have to re like remember? Yeah. You kind of like have your life before that, which you're going to remember. Mm. And then all the looped shit is kind of going to be lumped into one. I guess, yeah. So, I, yeah. So do you think what I think must have happened? You must have like, you know, must have found out that Australian cowboy man. Was he Australian? I don't remember. Um, the like guy who was singing, but also married. the people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Must have found out that he was uh, eating his... He do be eating his girl out, though. Uh, and he must have been, like, pissed off and gone into the desert and then found this cave and got sucked in, I'm assuming. Um, imagine that yeah. first day and then having to relive that again, like, getting cheated on. But he... I like the idea that he got cheated on so many times that he just became numb to it. And that's the whole point, is that he was already numb going in, pretty much. That's why his relationship was in shambles and, you know, life was already whatever. That once he got stuck in that loop... It probably, actually, like at first, it probably didn't actually matter that much. I mean, he probably freaked out for a little bit. But I reckon after about three uh, weeks uh, or something. How do you know that his life was so bad before? Because, I mean, that. Well, why else is his girlfriend cheating on him in the terms of like... Because remember, she... Oh, she yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Like, she says, she even says to him, like, are we going to be happy for once? And that she's not stuck in the loop. Like, he he didn't yeah. become cynical. He was already, like, cynical, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the point is that like because that's what the film as I was trying to say that's what the film is about it's like they're, they're making a constant mockery of like showing that you know finding somebody else like they're saying like they're constantly saying about how being codependent is really stupid but also everyone's so terrified of being alone that even though codependence often leads to like you know depression and the state that they're both in like Sarah's been divorced uh, Niles obviously gets cheated on he's kind of whatever um like it is it is this thing of like maybe find the right person but it's also like there's so many things that you should that you know leave up to chance or whatever but they kind of take destiny into their own hands and i like this idea of like at the end when she's saying to him like what if we get sick of each other and all these things he's just like we're already sick of each other like it's this idea of like who doesn't get sick of one another you know what i mean yeah and i really like this idea of like you know Niles is like really existential and almost like nihilistic in terms of like nothing means anything as he says many times and so who gives a shit 
But then, like, Sarah comes into the same world as him, and through experiencing the same pain as him, sometimes literally, um, I like the idea that they bond through that without even knowing. And it's this idea of once they actually get to the point where they're going to, like, you know, have sex, and for the first time for both of them, it's, like, no longer just about fucking, it's about making love or whatever. But you know what I mean. Like, it's about, like, actually loving each other or whatever. I like that there's not this big kind of speech and big moment. It's just... Like, like I say, it's relatable. It's just the two of them, yes, they're on shrooms and looking at dinosaurs. But, um, you know, they're just having a conversation about, like, one another without directly saying... Like, the, you know, like, <clears throat> they're just having a late-night conversation that they, like, without knowing it, they're getting to know each other better. And they realise that they're, like, the same. And, yeah, they... You know what I mean? Like, it's just this natural thing that happens, and I really like it. And I love this idea of, like, no matter how far you've fallen... Like, it's not like no matter how far you've fallen, somebody else can bring you back up and whatever. I love the idea that no matter how far you've fallen, there's already there's always going to be other people there that if you, like, together, like, you know... As she says, if you're willing to share your past and your pain and, like, you know, show the whole picture and somebody still likes you for that, then that's the person that you should, like, be with and... Yeah, I don't know. I, it, yeah. I'm going all over the place with it because uh, obviously I've only seen it once. But that's what I. These are some of the things I was taking away from it that I was like, these are really cool messages that aren't just beating you over the head. Like it's not just a like love solves all problems. It's like no, like you, we we're both still fucked up and like there's gonna be problems. We know that, but fuck it. Like life is so miserable. Like take let's take a chance. You know what I mean? I like that. It's cool. I think relating relating to that somewhat. There is there was a point where maybe I'm reading like looking too much into it, mm. but um, you know when uh, Sarah uh, yes. goes off to study for like Ooh, the first day or whatever, become the sciencey girl. Yes, to fix all the problems. Um, Niles is at the at the uh, kitchen island with the the parents, mm. and they're like talking or whatever. Um, and this is the second time he's like been there, but, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And they have the same conversation, like. Oh, um, she she's run off to make it about herself, and the dad's like, yeah, "No, yeah, she yeah. wouldn't do that." And he agrees because he's like obviously angry, like he's, he's angry because like and, yeah. she's not staying, you know, you know, he just wants to relive this over and over again. Even though he's her. the one who's driven her away, he wants <clears> to blame it on her. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like he, he kind of says that. And then he starts going away. Actually, no. Before he starts going away, they they say something like, "Oh yeah, like they're kind of like who's this?" And then they're like, "Oh, it's just it's just um, well that that's Mrs. It's just Mrs. Boyfriend." Yeah, and, and then he a, looks that's at the a camera. Constant joke around, yeah. Yeah, and he looks at the camera. He not looks at the camera, but it's kind of like I don't know. I saw it in his eyes, and I was like, "Yeah, like you you might be in this thing, but like." You still you, an You don't want to stay, Mrs. Mrs. Boyfriend. Misty's boyfriend. Misty, because yeah. that that's kind of like a recurring joke throughout. Is that everybody's like, you know, who the fuck is this? I'm not gonna say the rest of that. Uh, but like, they're like, who yeah. who is this guy? And he's like, always he, just like, um, he at first it's again it's this sense of nihilism and like who cares attitude where he's just like, oh, I'm he's like Misty's boyfriend. Like he almost enjoys people having no idea who he is. But then when Sarah kind of like comes along and he realizes that holy shit, things do actually matter. I think, no, I think, I think you aren't looking that's into the first, too much. I think, I think that's that the first is the time first realisation. I yeah. think that's the first realisation of, like, he well, he doesn't want to be in this time loop forever because he doesn't want to be this person anymore. Yeah, like, I, like the way that he said, he's always said it with, like, a, an almost a sense of, like, pride of, like, Misty's boyfriend. Like, he loves confusing people and being, like, I'm nobody, like, but I'm still fucking things up or whatever, but who cares? But, like, I think once Sarah leaves after she's made him realise that things do actually matter and he's kind of reluctant Sinks to admit that, when somebody else just says, like, wait, who even are you again? Like, he suddenly realises, oh, yeah, it's not that I don't care about anything. It's that nobody gives a shit about me and the one person who did, I drove away. But I do also, like, you were saying about how he... Uh, how he realizes in that moment that he, you know, he needs to get out the loop. Well, it's actually I do love this idea of like, you know, she's she's gone off and become this smart like whatever, and she's she's like done tests and experiments and has maybe figured out how to get out of this loop. Um, 
but and then I really like the idea of like um, Andy Samberg actually wants to stay because he's like well if the two of us stay here it's like us against the world no matter what because it, nothing else around us is even real at this point it's just us and we like we'll live forever and it's like you know he doesn't go into it in this detail but it's pretty much this thing of like we will never lose each other because and like the world is always going to be ours because he's afraid of like the real world getting in the way it's almost like a metaphor for like relationships like the first three months the honeymoon phase as they call it like everything's perfect and everything's amazing nobody wants to get out of that and then suddenly you'll get to your fourth month and you suddenly have an argument and you realize oh shit once the real world gets involved with the relationships and just not even like romantic relationships just shit in general once the real world gets involved with stuff it's other things that fuck things up, and you can become resentful for that, which is what Andy Samberg's character is. So yeah. I really like this idea of him wanting to stay, because he's like, if the rest of the world gets involved, that's going to break us up. Whereas she's very much the thing of like, well, you want it to be us against the world. This is our chance to actually prove that we can be that. And like, you know, they both don't agree with each other, but they eventually realize, well, Andy Samberg realizes that he is in the wrong, and if he actually wants to like be with her and take things to the next level he's got to be willing to take responsibility for the first time in his life and i just think it's so cool how just these little conversations and funny like lines of dialogue but they also like carry so much weight i don't know this film's so good <laughs> it's so good but yes, it is it is the obvious you know it's obvious that hey you know even if you say that um it's it's gonna be epic and perfect or, come on, bro. Who, who are you kidding? Yeah. You need to get out. <laughs> you do. You Like, you've got to, at a certain point... I love that it's not a narrative about, like, growing up or whatever. Like, it's not like Andy Samberg's some child and it's not like, grow up and get with the real world. It's this thing of, like... The, no, the, as an adult, the real world scares him because of adult reasons. Like, Andy Samberg is so easy to choose as the man-child character in things, but I really like that... I really feel like he took this role of, like... He's got a lot of actual acting to do like he's got the comp comedic moments and all this stuff like the dance sequence at the bar and other things but he's actually got a lot of serious acting to do in this film to portray like to portray portray sorry a lot of like emotion and inner conflict and stuff and i just think he does such a good job like who's the one who plays sarah again sorry Kristen. Kristen Mil miliotti or like miliotti. i mean i no doubt from her that she was gonna nail like she's like from the very brief time that she's in How I Met Your Mother, she is she is she's an incredible actress. I really love her in a lot of stuff. Like she just is so easy to show like vulnerability, but like also be funny and serious. Like I think she is a fantastic actress. I re I think I honestly I, I even think she's like probably the best actress the probably the best actor, sorry, in this like whole film i'd say i think jk simmons is up there but that's just because he's jk simmons but i really feel like she's probably doing the best job in the whole film like she conveys a lot of emotion through very little at certain points and yeah, yeah. i don't i mean the two of them as well their chemistry is just fantastic like you believe that they f that they're like in love and you believe like you believe that it's a friendship that grows naturally which i think is actually quite hard to do a lot of times you just kind of force two sexy looking actors together but neither like andy samberg and Kristen last name i keep forgetting like neither of them are like these super hot like you know top billing actors that are like hey but they're both like attractive ish people like but they don't you know what i mean they're very again it's this relatability thing like you believe that they're like in love and you believe you just believe everything in this film i ah, i really love this film the more i'm talking about it the more i'm like fuck i could go for hours talking about this and <laughs> it's such a simple film but it, oh it's got so much in it i really like this film i really like this I film a lot I, I could watch it i could watch it again third time I'm, I'm probably going to i did recommend it to i recommend it to like all my family immediately i told my sister my mom even my mom's fucking boyfriend i was just like hey if you two need film a film to watch when you're chilling out like fucking watch this it's so good <laughs> it's really great agree but agree agree before we end and i'm sorry that this has been a lot of me talking because this is what happens when we talk about films and we go into a deeper thing i just rattle on phrases and joe's like yeah, that's true. I just enjoyed it. <laughs> hey, I could tell you to shut the fuck up if you want. You could do that, but then we'd fight. You don't want that. I am trained in tickling. <laughs>
You ever been tickled so much it like hurts because you're laughing so much, but you want to stop laughing? Yeah, and, it, and your yeah. whole body tenses up. Yep. And you're like, Ehh. closest thing you'll ever feel is being. Hmm. <laughs> Male privilege, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, there are a few questions and plot holes I want to talk about. By the way, none of these actually affect the film in any way. These are just funny things to think about. So, what I thought about is if the way that she, Sarah, determines that if they blow themselves up within 3.2 seconds of going into the cave portally thing, that that will, like, burst them out of this pocket universe and into a separate universe. And the way that she realizes that this will work is because... She straps a bunch of C4. Where's she getting the C4? Anyway, she straps a bunch of C4 uh, to a goat and she puts him through. And then the, when the day next loops, the goat is not there. My question is, why then at the end, when J.K. Simmons is like, Hey, Andy Samberg at the bar, I got the message from your girlfriend. Does this blowing yourself up thing really work? And so Andy Samberg's like, sorry, who are you? So this is clearly like a... He realizes, holy shit, like, this works because this Andy Samberg is a completely different entity itself because he doesn't even know who I am, so they must have got out. My question is, if the goat didn't reappear, why did Andy Samberg? Think about it. He, he's got nothing. It doesn't make sense. Because that's the same day still, that's... And also, J well, it has to be the same day, because J.K. Simmons is still trapped in the same day. It's such a little thing that obviously doesn't matter at all, because it's just a nice thing to be like, Yeah, J.K. Simmons is going to get out as well. And he's got a family, so he deserves to get out. But, um... Yeah, it doesn't make any sense that he's there, if you actually think about it. But that's just a little thing. And also, does that mean that... So, like, my question is, if you actually think about it deeper and deeper, I'm assuming that this time loop thing is just a thing that opens up a ton of different parallel universes. So there are so many, there are hundreds of thousands of parallel universes where carrying on from things that they do in that day then actually bleed into the next day. Yeah, yeah. Because if if That's you're thinking really about cool. it in a in a uh, scientific a science way, where like they go into this cave and. You know, it's not like they're just rewind. You can't, you know, you can't it's not actually rewind time because yeah. like, their consciousness that... is retaining information and going through to the next. Yeah, it's, so and they, the, she even describes where... it as a pocket universe, doesn't she? Yeah, so there's, you know, there's there's dimensions or universes where from. Um, there's a universe where Andy know, Samberg is in jail for his girlfriend murdering a police officer, but she then threw herself in front of a truck. Yeah, or them just. Stealing a plane and crashing it into the earth. Oh yeah, they did do that. And, that was fun when they stole the plane. <laughs> and also uh, a par uni parallel universe where they they put a C4 in a cake. Yeah. <laughs> shoot it into the sky and it blows up. And then role play, and then Sarah role plays as a pirate. Undisclosed. Uh, something. As he describes, undisclosed. Um, foreign accent or whatever yeah <laughs> from her accent we could determine she's undisclosed <laughs> yeah and also at the end dinosaurs mm. ah. so oh, a little a little woo, uh, woo, woo. so for like there's a scene where the two the, the, the sarah and niles both uh eat mushrooms some shrooms at a campfire and they see, but they both see dinosaurs going through the uh, like mountains, and it's implied that it's like, you know, they're both they're both on shrooms or whatever, but they can it both see exactly a... the same thing. So it's like maybe what's going on? It was all just a here? trip. Oh my god, the whole film was a trip. Oh my god, oh. <laughs> probably. Uh, and that's the night they fall in love and have sex for the first time. Well, they've had sex before because Andy Samberg has slept with her thousands of times, but this time it's actually meaning something. Um... But then at the end of the film where they do actually manage to go forwards and they're at the millionaire's house and they're in the pool chilling talking about the fact that he has a dog. I really liked that ending where they're just like they're just having a, a banterful conversation that an actual couple would have. Like he's just he's like, have you never mentioned you had a dog? I don't know. Never came up. I've got a dog. And it's just like, ha 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 funny. 
but uh no it is it's better than that <laughs> um but it, again felt natural and it was a nice way to show that like without beating us over the head of like they got out and got married and everything's great like it's just a thing of like yeah we got out and we're chilling um but then the camera kind of pans away from them into the nevada desert and we see the dinosaurs again in daylight and it was a weird thing to end on. Mate, there's probably people that have gone into it and it actually does mean something. But I had no idea what that meant. Is that just meant to be a sign of, like, the dinosaurs showed up on the first time? They fell in love properly, so it's just a thing of, like, dinosaurs again, love. Or... Yes. The, the, the feelings, the feelings that were represented there still remain now that they are out Do of you think the that's it? Because, no offence, wow. but that's kind of dumb and ham-fisted. <laughs> I don't like that. There's no, got to be something. I think it's else just for a it. dumb. Th- is it just no. meant to be cute, like dinosaurs? I think it's just a dumb thing. But there's got to be a reason it's like, there, especially because it's the don't... closing shot. It's got to mean something. Yeah, right? it means whatever you want it to mean. Ooh, he's going film school on me. No, I'm not. I'm going. I'm going. Just don't think about it. <laughs> That's but what why I'm would they put it there? Just, just come to the, uh, come to the decision that be- ha- most satisfies, satisfies your me. mind. Uh, I cut it out entirely. There you go. Boom! Bloody got it. No, it's cute. Uh, it probably means something. Yeah. Um, I had other questions, but to be honest, I got so distracted talking about how much I love this film and the deeper meanings that I didn't even scratch the surface on. Because I believe it or not, I didn't. I we don't write this show. We just talk. Um, but yeah, I really love this film. Uh, talking about it more, I'm gonna watch it again this weekend. So, yeah, yeah, it's great. It's really fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, and if for some reason you've listened to the spoilers, well, there you go. I mean, still watch it. I mean, you, you know. We didn't talk about everything. That's true. There are some things, there are some jokes we didn't talk about. There are some things. Gay sex. That was, I mean, I'm not saying gay sex is a joke, but I just mean there's it's a bit. It's definitely not. Yes. <sighs> it's, God, uh... it's, yeah. But it's also funny when you see Andy <laughs> Samberg, who is, is not, not gay, gay. <laughs> but then he worried. has gay sex and he goes mm, it's i'm like, glad i tried it's it like, it's okay he's not actually gay but and he's hey. getting gayed up yes and i liked how sarah was cool with it she didn't even bat an eyelid wow very progressive wow. lonely island very cool the um sjw's will be very happy with this film sjw approved even hmm. i mean most is that char- a new uh, Most of the rating? characters are white. No, there's Puerto Ricans. Yeah, most of the characters are white. But if that annoys you, well, yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, just watch this film, please. I'm, we're not getting anything from you watching it. Like, we don't get any money. We don't get any... I mean, bragging rights, of course. But um, who to? Nobody knows. Uh, yeah, it's great. I really like it. 9.5 out of 10. Boom. Bloody boom. Raised it a bit. Uh, I think it's great. Yes, yeah, so uh, that is... Clapping. That's the end of the show. Thank you. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you. I felt, felt like that's like an Obama speech. You know, everybody's like, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not going to try and do an Obama voice. But then yeah. Obama claps into the mic. <laughs> and he says, thank you. I am thank applauding myself. Mm. I, uh... If I could take a third term, I, uh, I would. But, uh, I can't. What does he do nowadays? He has a, I think he has a podcast, you know. He's, yeah, something like that. With Bruce he also, Springsteen. Um, <laughs> he also releases his favourite hip-hop songs. Yes, he does, and movies. Every year. And yeah. he said that he likes The Boys. God, Obama's is so cool. How can he not <laughs> like Obama? He watches The Boys. He's so cool. Oh. He's cool. on an episode of Comedians in Cars getting coffee with Jerry Seinfeld. And, like, they can't obviously drive... This is when he was president, so they obviously couldn't drive him around in one of Jerry Seinfeld's old cars that he loves. Um, so they just drove around the front bit of the oh, White yeah. House talking, and I was like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember He's that. great. Whatever happened to presidents of the United States, hey? They got shit. That's what I'm going to say. Um, so, yeah, thank you uh watching, listening, Spotify. Yeah, cool. Cheers, YouTube, cheers, even lads. cooler. Um, yep, yeah, subscribe, like. Don't bother hitting the bell. We only upload once a week. It's fine. You're not going to miss it. Uh, or you are. You know, do you. Uh, this show is not exactly designed to become popular and get views. It's just a thing that we do. 
Uh, but yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for looking at my thumbnail and going, wow, that was, <laughs> that took some, that took a little bit of time. And that, that jovial. Thanks. I did, I did spend a little bit of time on that. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Joe, you got anything nice that you're going to do for people if they like the video? Um, or mean, I don't know. Well, listeners, if you could possibly position yourself at the foot of Mount Everest. Okay, hang on. Let me just... I... Alright, I'm there. What do I do now? I will climb to the top of it. Oh, really? It's cold. Yeah. Okay. But you're at the bottom, so you're fine. I'm climbing. It's no, 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 no. I'm oh. climbing. Oh, sorry. No, right. No, I'm, I'm I get back. to the top. You stay down. at the bottom. I'm oh, okay. Then... I'm back down. I'm back down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then I... I lower a... A straw that is as high as Mount Everest down to you. Oh, hello. Here it is. Yep. And then I, right. I, I feed you water through it. Oh! And you know why this is a good a good thing? It's it's really cold at the top of Mount Everest. Uh -huh. So that means... I'm drinking the water. The water will be very, very cold and... Oh, it's and, chilly! And very refreshing. Mm, and then you I know what it... you can do once you're refreshed? What can I do? Conquer the world. Yo! That's all you need. All right, I've got my shoe. I'm going to beat some people to death. I'm going to take over the world. Thank you very much, Joseph. No problem, man. Cut out your last name. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. I took over the world. Thank you very much. Uh, so if you want to take over the world, like the video. And then, but, but when you become president, king, queen of the world, um, mention us. Credit the talk. Yeah, come on, like talking don't... shit podcast. We, we helped. We helped you get to the top. Don't. I'm, we're not asking for money or anything. Just, just, just mention us. Like that'd be nice. I mean, out. if you do have money, you know, we don't. So I mean, you can, but we're not asking. Just, just some recognition would be nice. Just a little bit of like, well, you know, I went to the bottom of Everest, sucked a straw, killed uh, Kim Jong Un, Donald Trump. He's not president anymore. Joe Biden, uh, Liz. We even. I think they have to kill Liz though, Joe. If you want to take over the world, you got to get Liz. Oh. Philip's already gone. She's almost there. Nobody cares about Philip. We care about if when Liz goes, that's when we care. If you're yeah, not British and you're true. listening to this, we actually everyone over here does not care about Prince Philip dying. None of us do. Uh, but Liz, that's a different story. We love. No, Liz. I do. Why do you care? Uh, he did some decent stuff. People kind of clown on him a bit. But well, he was like, like a bit I generally racist don't care about the. He cheated on Liz, bro. Uh, I generally, on. oh, I didn't know that, but you can't um, cheat on Liz. I generally don't care about the royal family in general. Oh so, yeah, but, me either. You know. Like, but I mean, I, I like Liz. Well, but hey, I like they're, her. they're pretty funny sometimes. They do have <laughs> some kind of a sense of humour. I like when they spend but, millions yeah. of pounds of our tax money to refurbish their homes. Don't, don't do it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, that's enough ranting of the royal family. We will see you next week. We're going to talk about Invincible next week. I'm locking it in. We'll talk about Invincible. Uh, more Amazon Prime things. Joe just showed his ass to me, so that's the time for me to go. It's hairy as hell. Help me. Bye.